Welcome to this new video from Flutterflow Academy. Today we will talk about the Epper. The Epper is one of the first widgets you can see on your left hand side while you are in the UI Builder. The Epper is a widget which is part of the Page Elements widgets. This video is divided into three parts. In the first part we will cover use cases and opportunities you have when using an Epper. In the second part we will talk about styling of the Epper. And in the third part, we will talk about the different components of the app bar and how to use them efficiently. Let's get started. First, we need to drag the app bar onto our screen. As you can see, the app bar is the bar at the top of your screen. Mostly, it is used to give the user of your app the option to navigate to some point in the app during all times of using the app. Something maybe like a settings button right here. But it can also be used for a lot of other things. As an example, if you have a newspaper app and someone is scrolling through an article right here, you maybe want to put a save this article button right here to give the user the option to save the article wherever he or she is in the article. Or maybe something like a like button if the user is reading the article and wants to like it. So there are a lot of different use cases for the app bar. One thing you need to know, it always sticks at the top of your screen. So you give the user the option to do whatever action you put in the app bar during all times he or she uses the app. One important thing you need to know while thinking about your design is that there can just be one app bar on every screen. So if I try to drag in a second app bar, it tells me that my app bar already exists. Now let's talk about styling the app bar. The styling options you have for your app bar you can see on your right hand side. The first thing we can style is the background color. To change the color Flutterflow gives you three options. You can change it with this kind of advanced window where you can type in a hex code or really change a lot of things about the color. This is for people who have a really sophisticated design kit and who really know which color they want to pick. Then you have the palette option. With the palette option you can pick a tone from a color. So as an example if I click on blue I can select a different tone of blue. And then you have the simple option. The simple option is the option you most of the time want to use if you just try to do a simple mock-up of your app where you really just select the basic color. The next thing we can style is the default button color. But first, what is the default button? The default button is the button you see right here, which always lets your user navigate back to the screen before. You want to have something like the default button in your app, which always lets your user navigate back to another screen. Because if you don't have something like the default button or another button where the user can navigate, the user might get stuck on a screen. So that's why the default button is really useful because it always lets the user navigate back to the last screen. So as an example, if I have an app for my restaurant and the users scroll through my menu and then they click on a menu item to see the ingredients of my pasta, then I want to use the default button to let the user navigate back to the menu. And as shown before, you have three options to style the color of the default button. The advanced, the palette and the simple option. If you don't want to use the default button because you have something else that lets your user navigate back, you can deactivate the default button down here. With a simple click, it is gone. The next thing we will talk about is the app bar height. The app bar height is how high the app bar is. You have two options to style that. You have pixels and percentage. So what's the difference between pixels and percentage and why should you use either one of them. Pixels is the option you use if you really want to define a specific height of pixels. So as an example if I type in 55 my app bar is 55 pixels high and that doesn't change no matter on which device I use the app bar on. So as you can see the app bar appears much smaller on the Galaxy S20 Plus than it does on the iPhone 11 Pro. You don't want to use pixels most of the time because it changes the size of the app bar relative to the rest of the screen. You want to use percentage instead because with percentage you define a fixed amount of percentage that the app bar takes from your screen. So you can see the app bar now takes 8% of my screen. 
no matter on which device I am on. So now it appears the same size no matter if I'm on the Galaxy S20 Plus or I'm on the iPhone 11 Pro. And then the last thing you can style on your app bar is elevation. Elevation is the level of elevation that your widget has. That is important when we are talking about design. As an example, if I put my elevation to 55, you can see a big difference because there appears a shadow because the app bar is much higher than the screen. The screen is level zero and the app bar now is level 55. That's why there is a shadow. If I put the elevation back to four, you can see it kind of looks normal. If we zoom a bit more in, there's still a little shadow, which I can completely eliminate if I press elevation zero. Now it looks completely like one screen. The app bar doesn't look elevated. That gets more important if we talk about app design later. Now let's continue to the third part of the video, the app bar components. For that, we will drag a text element onto our app bar. And you can see that there are three parts, leading, title, and actions. These are the three sections our app bar is divided in. We will start by explaining the title section. The title section is, as the name shows it, there for the title. You can put a text element in there, but also maybe an image or a circle image, whatever you want. But there's one thing you need to know. If I try to drag in a second text element, it says you're about to replace the widget inside of the title. I will cancel that. So you need to know there can just be one widget in this title section. Then there's the action section right here. For that, we will use an icon button, drag it onto our action section. But if I now try to drag on a second icon button, it works. The actions section is used for, how the name states, actions. So as mentioned before in the use cases, maybe you want to put a settings button right here or a save this article button. So whichever actions you want to give your user during all times of using your app, you want to put it right here. And then the last part is this part, the leading part. Leading, maybe also a navigation part. That is where the default button is in or maybe where you want to put your own icon button. You can see the default button disappears if you put your icon button right here. But if I delete my icon button, the default button is there again. So you need to know there can also only be just one element in this leading section. So thank you for listening to this video from Flutterflow Academy. If you want to learn more about UX and UI design of your app or about Flutterflow, just follow our channel.